Welcome to another cast brought to you by netrunners.co.uk. This is the fifth round and final round of Swiss, and the final match, game two. Myself there on my left playing HB Engineering the Future, and Dan from Stoke there on the right playing Andromeda with his monster nine card hand. So, uh, as I've said in previous casts, I had to win both of these games in this uh, this round of Swiss to be able to take top eight. Uh, it would be pretty much guaranteed if I did. Uh, there's a lot of people sat on the same amount of prestige here. Um, I think myself included. Twelve prestige, not enough. There are so many people here on twelve prestige. A lot of split rounds. Only fourteen prestige will guarantee it. Uh, or twelve prestige and a very good uh, weak side wins rate. Um, so, again... I took a mulligan there, I think, for probably the the uh, fifth time. In fact, uh, today I just didn't seem to get a lot of luck with my uh, with my corp draws at all, as you've seen from round four. Uh, there's only one round where I had a good uh, a good draw, where I saw lots of pieces of ice. Was a game that I won. Uh, this one is uh, just going to have to see what, what we get from the mulligan. Hope we can't be any worse than last time. Could be as bad, but not not worse. At least I see some ice there. I've got a roto turret in hand, but it looks like I do have a couple of agendas. Um, and he's just showing me his hand there. He's very happy with it. Uh, I think he's got uh, some some very useful tutoring and some Katie Jones action and so forth. So I have drawn up into and get another agenda there. I think I've got six points in hand. I'm gonna, so I'm going to put that rotor turret there on uh, HQ and put something else there on R&D and pass the turn. So I've got a Giller hand. So I've got a Snare in hand and I've got a Vitruvius. Maybe just three points. He's going to short gamble first click. All the money. Uh, he's going to Dirty Laundry R&D. Uh, sorry, yeah, Archives. And take yet more money. I'm kind of hoping here he goes against HQ and I get take out some hands. So I do have six points of agenda, five points of agendas in hand there. I've got uh, three agenda cards: uh, ABT, a Vitruvius, and a Giller hands. Then he's going to install a Mimic and a Corroder, and that is really not what you want to see. Um, first turn against Andy. So he now has a means of breaking pretty much the majority of my ice. Uh, I've just drawn up in there to a. Uh, House Ecology AI, which didn't do a great deal for me, I have to admit. I'm going to draw first click uh, and see the next bronze, which is a useful draw at the very least. It's something he can't break yet. Um, so I'm going to install that over HQ for a click. Probably here should have got aggressive and looked to install that on agenda and tried to, to uh, start scoring out of my hand. But at the same time, with the criminal, you have to be aware of the inside job. It's very much a possibility. He's going to play Desperado first click. Um, he has an account siphon, a Katie Jones, a Shaw, uh, special order in hand. He's got a lot of good stuff. Uh, he's going to run archives. Oh no, he's going to run. Sorry, going to run R and D. And I'm debating here whether to res whatever it is I have on R and D there. I don't want to leave HQ vulnerable, so I'm inclined to leave it and trust my luck, which is fine. Sees a Victor 2.0, which he can't do anything about, uh, which is exactly what I would quite like to see next. And uh, he will install the Case Jones and use the Case Jones, I think, presumably. Yes, indeed. I think he's still got one click left. Uh, I'm not sure. I th uh, okay, I think he's passed the turn. I think we used all clicks. I'm not. Sure. I think I'm sure he missed the click there. But I'm going to drop into Victor 2.0. And the question is here: Do I start going for a remote server? Do I ice up R&D? Um, you know, he's he's going to get in. It's only a matter of time. He's kind of got all the pieces of the puzzle assembled already, so I'm going to put that Victor in front of R&D. I cannot recall what's there behind it. Um, we're going to install the pass turn over. I think that's a snare there. I think I'm trying to try and get him to uh, to run on it and hopefully lose some cards. He's got a decoy, I think, in hand. Yep. So, nice anti-tag anti measure. Oh, it's not. Sorry, I tell a lie. That is not a, uh, a snare. So he's just going to take some money, put three on Katie, and uh, pass the turn over by the looks of it. So uh, it's just build. Sorry, now it's just first click. Oh, crumbs, I'm very confused. This is the problem having two sets of uh, click counters out. It uh, makes it far too challenging to figure out what's what's going on here. Uh, he's going to draw, so that's his second click. So first click was three on Katie, second click was drawn, third click was the same old thing, and he draw, drew again. I'm going to see another Victor 2.0. I'm going to res the Eve campaign at the end of his turn. So spending five, getting two back, and uh, it's a bit of a risk here. I kind of need to think about protecting this now, because you know the evil provide me with some steady, stable economy, but at the same time, I, 
you know, he's got the money to go in and trash it. And having just spent five credits on it, or three effectively, I can't afford for him to go in and do that. So I'm going to install over uh, the EVE campaign there, taking a credit for engineering the future. And I'm going to take another two and pass the turn back over. So uh, you can click through and still access that EVE and trash it if he wishes, but uh, that's fine. I probably wouldn't even bother resing it, to be honest. It's not worth it. At the very least, it's setting up now for installing some uh, agendas. That's the plan. He is going to run R&D, I believe. And I'm giving some thought here as to whether I want to res the stuff. So I'm going to res the Victor 2.0 for 5. Making me somewhat of a poor corporation here. Not what uh, I really want to do. Particularly because I've got agendas in hand. And The problem here is I could very much leave myself open. He is going to click through. So you're spending three clicks to access and you'll score the Vitruvius. Um, least he deserves after my lucky accesses on uh, R&D last game, I suppose. But somewhat unfortunate given I've got a fair bit in hand as well. And this is the problem with clickable ice. It can still, you know, one piece isn't enough. It's uh, the runner can still pressure it quite significantly without having to go and fetch the breaker. And although he can, because he's got a corroder and a mimic out, it's going to be very difficult to make him click through or to not click through that victor. So he still has one click left. I'm sure he's thinking about putting three on Katie here. Uh, no, he's not. He's going to run that remote. Uh, I'm not going to res because I can't afford it. He's going to have to pay five to trash it. And I think that's a good play. Uh, he's just denied me a huge pile of cash. And uh, that is that is a problem. So I'll draw up into yet another agenda. So I've now got four agendas in hand. I'm going to install Gillahans and take two credits, I think. And this is just now a case of trying to uh, get some of those agendas out of hand again. Um, it just seems to happen. He's going to clear Katie Jones' first click. Um, second click, I think he's looking to account siphon here. This is the kind of point where you wished he had the Eve in still. <laughs> you could res it. He's got a special order, so he might be thinking about going to fetch a Codegate Breaker. But I've got uh, seven points. No, not seven points. I've just installed the Gillahan. Six points of agendas in hand. A snare as well. But my odds aren't great at him hitting the snare. And I'm, whether I have the money at the end of it is also uh, a bit of a moot point. He's going to Dirty Laundry R&D. Uh, he's going to click through. I'm not going to uh, access, I'm not going to uh, res, sorry, he will access the Jackson Howard and trash for three credits. Uh, and that's fine, I was quite happy with that. He still gets some money for the dirty laundry, but at the end of the day that just took his time up. And uh, I'm quite happy to uh, let that happen. See you next bronze, which is perfect. I'm giving some thought as to whether I hold off scoring this or whether I put the next bronze down, but no, I'm going to score the Gillahans. Uh, pass the turn back over, I need to discard now, so it's probably a mistake. And I think I may ditch an agenda here. I'm sure I ditch an agenda there, just because I kind of have to bluff it out now. I'm at a point pretty much like where I was last game of having a ridiculous amount of agendas in hand. I'm going to res the next bronze on uh, HQ there, which he can't break, and so the account siphon doesn't uh, doesn't work, which is fine. I've only got one credit. He will special order. Um, so the second click, and obviously, assumingly, the third click to install whatever it is he has next. Probably be at the end, there a Yog. So that next bronze now is not going to do much good either. And I know there's a rotor turret underneath it, so I'm uh, it's only going to cost him two to break with the Mimic. So that's just two credits now for an access on HQ. Ugh. Yeah, that's not good when you've got six, six points for Jen's worth in hand now. I don't know what it is about this corp deck, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, hated me so for the course of the tournament. But, uh, oh boy, did it hate me, this tournament. I uh, just seemed to have a load of agendas that I couldn't deal anything anything with. Uh, so he was going to run and score an ABT. Because, again, the likelihood was he was going to hit something. I'm going to draw, see a hedge fund, which I can't do anything with at this stage either. And, uh, yeah, this was just... This is pretty much just the nature of my corp game. If you haven't seen round four, game two... Uh, you know, go back and watch that one as well because it's pretty much a rerun of this match, just without the Andy aggression. I'm going to install and I'm going to gill hands for three. And I think it's an agenda, and I'm just going to hope here that he doesn't run it because I haven't really got much of a choice here but to uh, get aggressive and score agendas. He's going to draw twice, which I'm happy to see. He draws three times, 
and uh, he will have a look at the remote which point I will res the Victor 2.0 to keep him out because I don't... oh I'm not going to res it sorry uh, I'm going to let him access oh and it's a house ecology sorry it's not an agenda <laughs> it was my way of uh, hopefully finding a way of trashing it but again I've just got to slow him down and try and keep him away from HQ at this point once again I've got a wrap around there which isn't going to do any good now he's got a corroder out either and it just gets that breaker suite out so fast with an economy engine in the shape of Katie Jones. It just becomes impossible now to compete. And uh, with six points of agenda still in hand. And ice that is next to is next to useless. It's a real problem. So I've got the Victor 2.0 on the remote. He can click through it. Um, he can't break it with the Yog. So that's a benefit if he spends two clicks before he runs. It does mean that I can potentially uh, score out the agenda. So I'm going to install for free. And uh, I'm going to install Paths and uh, Hedge Fund. So I've got nothing but agendas left in hand now. If he runs through on HQ, he's going to score. And, uh, oh, and I've got one piece of ice left as well. So he's given some thought as to what he wants to do. Um, oh, am I going to res the Roto? I think that would probably be a mistake. I need the money. Unless he's same old thing account siphoning me. I'm not sure at this stage whether he's just doing a run on HQ or whether he's account siphoning. I am going to raise the rotor turret for four. Uh, he'll break that for two. Now he's going to access rather than account siphon. And uh, going to see the next bronze. So that was a stroke of luck on my part. Uh, he gets the credit from Desperado. That was his first click. There's no reason why he can't just go again. Or again use the same old thing here to account siphon drain me a five probably shouldn't have raised the roto i think that was a, a big error but he is short on cash at the moment he only seems to have one or two credits uh left he's got a fairy there to play with if he wants to um sounds a little bit sick and perverted but nevertheless it's the case and uh he will looks like he's going to run somewhere he's going to run the remote second click so that's the worst possible case if he'd spent waited another click it would have been different um I've got a I'm kind of I've got a choice here. I'll res the Victor 2.0 and see if he clicks through it. And if he does click through it, then he's going to score. That's fine. But at the very least, it's taken his whole turn doing so. And I've got a more secure server now to start installing into. But I've got real issues here. I think he's not. I think he's probably going to bounce. So we do the trace, which I don't bother breaking. I bother pumping up. So again, I've got no credits to be able to score that agenda out at this stage, so he's got a little bit of time. Um, but he's also skin, so that's positive at the very least. He's going to put three on Katie here, I would imagine. Yes, indeed. And uh, he's probably looking to think about getting up to the point where he can sure gamble now as well, I'd imagine. So, yep, he's got, going to draw, see a data sucker. I'll draw, see a botic labour, which would have been useful, oh, I don't know, one turn ago, possibly, before I'd spent all my money. Yeah, that would have been nice. Never mind. Haven't seen Jackson Howard all game either. Pretty much all tournament, I think, as I recall. Uh, Threw him in the deck. And uh, do I see him or do I buggery? It's just not, unfortunately, my court game this tournament. One more court win. Who knows what could have happened? I could have gone into this game with a, a much loftier ideal of my deck, but sadly it wasn't the case. So I'm going to just gill a hands and take some cash. Uh, get in a position to start trying to think about scoring my agenda that's in the remote server. But uh, with the full breaker suite, Desperado, Katie Jones, same old thing with account siphon in archives. I've got problems. Uh, he's going to put another three on Katie, first click. Every click here he spends, not running that server is a good click. Uh, he's got a data sucker and a ferry he can install here if he chooses, but he hasn't got any money actually, so he needs to take some cash. He's going to play a data sucker. I don't think he's got any money to be able to play it. I'm sure. I don't know, maybe he did. I'm sure he installed that illegally there, but uh, that's fine, whatever. Um, I'm hardly in a position to be able to complain. And for those of you who've watched game uh, uh, match three, <laughs> yeah, I really shouldn't moan about uh, about anything like that. So I will triple advance and score uh, three two of some description. Um, maybe the ABT, I don't think I trigger it, could be the Vitruvius, but either way, takes me up to two points, so three points now with the Gillahans. And uh, still up against the wall here, but I'm on three points at the very least. Uh, he will run archives and take a credit, gain a data sucker token. Oh no, sorry, he's going to run R&D, use the data sucker tokens to get through the victor and break for free and access. Gaining lots of credits in the meantime, doesn't see anything, I think that's another Bartic Labour there. 
but don't quote me on it. So that's, uh, he's going to spend a couple of clicks gaining credits. Not quite sure what he's doing here. I mean, again, I think he's getting into the position where he can sure gamble. But, you know, this is not a great board position for me. The Victor's doing okay work. I think he ran on archives a couple of times there, took some money. And, uh, he's going to run on HQ. See another Bartic Labour, so another stroke of luck. I have got a Jenners in hand. And there's the second Bartic Labour in hand, so I've got four points still there waiting for him. He's got two data sucker tokens ready to spend, six credits to come off Katie Jones. And I am just going to have to give a hand for some cash in the vain hope that I can get to the point where I can start using the Bartic Labour as the score out. He will, uh, same old thing, the account siphon, and uh, he'll break for two credits. Uh, drone me a 5, uh, take 10 and 2 tags, so there goes all my money, once more, and that, is, that was always going to happen, there was nothing much I could do about it. He's then going to lawyer up for the unholy uh, double combination of account siphon and lawyer up, so he's going to draw plenty of cards up, clear both tags, Ugh. not great, not great. So that was all four clicks, and he, I think he's got a discard here. Let's give him some thoughts to what he's going to discard and get rid of the decoy, which should be sensible, given I don't have any way of punishing tags anyway in this deck. And I'm going to, sorry, uh, mandatory draw, see an aggressive secretary. But I've got no money, so there's not a great deal I'm going to install, gaining a credit, and probably gain three with Gillahans. Hilla hands, however you want to pronounce it. Um, it's the aggressive secretary there in the remote, and the idea is again to try and waste his time. Uh, or at the very least make him use his data sucker tokens and break the server for free. But it's going to take time, it's going to take money, and that's what I want to try and do. Exactly the same terms I was using in game, in round four. Um, when you've got too many agendas in hand and no way of uh, installing them safely. And really, again, it's just the case of biding for time here. He runs, sees Bartic Labour, so he's getting very unlucky here with his HQ access. Because there's still four points of agendas there. And he is seeing the same cards over and over. Uh, but he does get a data sucker and a Desperado, for, uh, Desperado credit for his troubles. Got a hostage there. Maybe he might look up for a John Massonori for fun and giggles. But I would suggest he probably doesn't need it. All he needs to do here is continue to put uh, pressure on my, my centrals. And uh, he's going to hostage. So again, I, I, presumably the only one he could be looking for here is a Masanori. There are, of course, other connections. Oh, there he is on top. <laughs> Isn't that always the way, ladies and gentlemen? You always check the top card first and then curse your luck. Never mind. At least hostage isn't horrifically inefficient. And I'm guessing he probably doesn't have any other connections in his deck besides Katie Jones and John Masanori. So he will install the Masanori anyway, so, so that's a double event. And he'll put three more on Katie. Oh, no, sorry, he runs Archives. Oh, he runs HQ! Ha! <laughs> runs HQ, and uh, sees another Bartic Labour. Probably the same one he saw the last three times. I'm going to draw C and Eli. Eli's good. Eli's a piece of ice I can probably use here. Um, at the very least it costs him four credits to get through, or two credits and two data sucker tokens. So it's somewhat taxing. I kind of want this on a remote though, rather than HQ, and I think this is probably a misplay here. Um, I think probably the correct play was to put that on a remote server and start trying to score out those agendas. I think I just at this point was in such a bit of a mind dungeon with my corp deck. Um, I just never got off the ground with it, and uh, as a result I was just overprotective of HQ. Um, I mean, to be fair, I have four points in hand. But he's going to run, he's going to see an Adonis, which he'll trash for three. I think he's just having a look at it because it was alt art. No, he's not going to trash it, so he's going to leave it. No, he is going to trash it. Yeah, okay, so he'll trash that for three. I don't think he was familiar with the alt art for Adonis, so he was uh, just gonna <laughs> had to clock it in his head what it was and what it did again. But uh, so here we are again in this same situation. He hasn't run on that remote server. I could have put an agenda in there and scored it out for fun, taking me to five points and enabling the Bartic out for the win. But you know, it's typical, isn't it? The one time you don't install the agenda is the one time that they don't run it. Uh, he's going to install another same old thing. 
So our account siphon's coming. Oh boy, is it coming. I think I'm on seven credits, which is just enough to be able to bot account uh, an agenda if I wish. He's going to run archives, take credit and a desperado token, and also gain a card from Masanori as well. I've just drawn up into an efficiency committee, which is really bad timing, but I know that account siphon's coming, and I kind of have to here. I have to use the credits before I lose the credits. So I'm going to trigger, sorry, I'm going to install, gain a credit, uh, triple advance, and score, I think, the ABT there, which I don't trigger. Probably should have been more aggressive with my ABTs in this tournament. There's two occasions where I think what's the worst that could really happen. But I'm on five points, so I'm effectively on match point. I have another Botic Labour in hand. I have another 3 2 in hand. Uh, okay, yes, I have an efficiency committee, but I'm not going to do anything with that at this stage. And all I have to do is fend him off, take some money, and we're fine. But at the same time, he's got the same old thing to be able to account siphon. So uh, it's going to take a while for me to get to that point. And that is the power of same old thing. You know it's coming, there's not much you can do about it. He will run and trash a Jackson Howard. So there's Jackson Howard number two that I really, really could have used, but still a V. Just after you trigger an ABT, you draw Jackson. Of course you do. He's going to run HQ. And see you next bronze. Very unlucky again with his HQ accesses here. Uh, there is no denying it. He is incredibly unlucky. He's going to emergency shut down the Victor 2.0 on the remote server. And... Uh, I think he's going to look to run there. No res, no res. Uh, he's going to access see the aggressive secretary, which he'll trash for free. There's no advancements on it, so it doesn't do anything. Should have probably put an advancement token on it. Would have been quite nice to pop off a uh, his mimic. I would, I think, probably would have been the strongest here at this point. But uh, yeah, I've still got four points in hand. Got a snare in hand, uh, but I've got no money. But I can gill hands. I'm going to install and uh, take uh, take through gill hands. Gill hands. And pass the turn. I'm not sure whether that's an agenda or a snare. Cannot, cannot recall. Uh, first click he's going to run there. And I think I may be caught out here. So I'm not going to res. Not going to res. It's whether he's going to access or not. He will access. He'll see a snare. And uh, I'm debating here whether to trigger or not. And I think I make the right decision and say I'm not going to trigger it. Uh, the money is actually more important to me at this stage than um, than him losing cards. And you can see from his hand, he doesn't really have anything in hand that he'll be gutted to lose. Uh, it's more a case I've wanted him to take up the click running there. Um, it was just, you know, a way of wasting his time and slowing him down. The four credit hit would have been too much for me, and it would have taken me out of Bartic range by a long shot. He's going to run uh, HQ. Probably feeling out for the same old thing account siphon. I'm going to res the Eli for three. Leave me with two credits. So not an appealing target for the account siphon, but again, it could be that he just wants to leave me on zero credits as long as he possibly can. He'll click, click through it and spend two credits to break. And there we go. And he'll access. And uh, surely my luck will run out here eventually. Season of the Botic Labour. So, uh, and again, I'm getting lucky here on my HQ accesses. There's no denying it. Uh, he should have had this game wrapped up long ago, really. Just on measure of play, he's been in an absolutely dominant ball position. Um, but there isn't a great deal I can do about it. I've got a hedge fund, so that's good. Um, that means that I can install here, or I can uh, probably go Hiller hands and then do the hedge fund. Uh, to try and take me out of account siphon range. So I've got some money to be able to do that. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to use Again, use the Giller hands. I'm going to hedge fund and pass turnover. And you know he can account siphon here again, but I'm getting ahead of the account siphon, and that's that's good. If he doesn't get me here, I win the game. Um, if he doesn't account siphon, then I will win the match because I've got a three-two and I've got a Bartik in hand. And he he'll know that. Um, he is going to run HQ. He's going to pay two data suckers, two credits to get through the Eli, and then pay another two credits to get through the Roto turret. And he'll access. And I'm just praying he doesn't steal the 3 2 here. Uh, and he does. So there's the accelerated beta test gone. Again, on <laughs> I can't really complain given the amount of access he had at HQ there. But a little bit frustrating when I was, again, once more one turn away from victory. A guaranteed win. 
Um, you know, I was on five points. I had a Botic in hand. I had a 3-2 in hand. I had the money to be able to trigger it. Um, all I had to do was avoid the account siphon. Um, which, you know, I would have at this point. Because now he's not in a position to be able to do it. And ain't that a kicker. Stealing that ABT was incredibly important. And he's going to, uh, I think, go through an HQ again here. No, he's going to go through an R&D. And he'll access. See an itchy. That would have been nice to see a while back, but never mind. So I'll draw up into that itchy. And now again, well, I'm at the point now where I have to either install that efficiency committee face down in a remote and hope to bot account the next turn, or um, start sealing up HQ and R&D in the hope that I draw another 3-2. Most of them are gone. I think there's only two left in the deck, so I could be waiting a while. Uh, two Jackson Howards have gone as well, so that's a problem. Um, here, really, the plan is to think about making a remote server safe, but with three data sucker tokens a Mimic, a Yog, and a Corroder. The likelihood of me being able to make any remote server safe is slim to none. And so there's a huge amount of pressure on here. I'm going to draw and see an aggressive secretary, which again doesn't do me any good. I'm going to install, take credit, uh, and I'm going to advance it once past the turn. So I'm bluffing out here for an efficiency committee win. He has to kind of run it. He doesn't have a choice. He's going to run archives. Oh, sorry, he's going to have a look at archives and see what's there. I think he was checking to see if I had any aggressive secretaries. He's already seen one of them, I think, hasn't he? Or maybe not, I can't recall. Um, so it could be an aggressive secretary, he knows that. Could be an efficiency committee. Can he really take the risk? He has to run it and he has to see it. But the first thing he's going to do is run, run R&D. And you'll see an Eli. So, so far so good. That's another piece of ice that will do good work if I draw it up. got an inside job there in hand which will probably be very strong for him uh, he is going to run the remote I believe at this point I'm thinking about whether to res the ice I'm not going to res that do I res the Victor 2.0 and make him break it try and convince him to access it's a, it's a gamble how, how far can I push him so I'm going to res the Victor at which point he'll pay the two data sucker tokens and, and uh, he will access I will then trigger the aggressive secretary, and now I've got to choose what I'm going to trash. And uh, this is a real, real difficult choice to make. Real tough one, because you kind of want either his mimic or his yog here, and I'm not sure which. Uh, I go for the yog because I've got two um, code gates out. I'm not sure if that's the right decision. I'm really not sure if that's the right decision. Um, I think I kind of needed to protect HQ here, and the Roto turret was doing that very well for me. So I'm not sure if that was the right play. He's got a Fem there in hand as well, so maybe the Mimic actually wouldn't have done that much good anyway. He would have just played the Fem out, and uh, it wouldn't have affected him a great deal. So possibly on that, looking at his hand, the Yog was strongest. I didn't see that uh, when I was playing, obviously, but uh, tough. Ch that was a tough choice. That was a tough decision. In many respects, getting rid of the data sucker probably would have accomplished just as much, but at the same time, um, there's no nothing to say he may have had, could easily have had another data sucker in hand. Um, it's unlikely he had another yog in hand. You know, criminal not knowing for having uh, recursion, or even a lot of multiple breakers, particularly code gate breakers. Uh, you often find criminals running with just the one code gate breaker, uh, maybe two, but usually just the one. But anyway, I'm back in the game a little bit here now. He doesn't have a full rig anymore. And uh, I'm in a good position. That next bronze is going to do great work on that remote server. So I'll install that for free. And I'm uh, probably just going to gill our hands here. And again, I wonder if that was the best play. Uh, I'm trying to score out the efficiency committee the old-fashioned way here, I think. Um, just lock him out. Um, but with an inside job in hand, that's not going to do a great deal. But I'm going to gill our hands and take three credits and pass the turn over. He's going to inside job R&D, and bypass the victor, I'm not going to res. Uh, he will access, and I'm just hoping and praying here he doesn't see the agenda. He doesn't, it's uh, House Ecology, which he gets rid of for one. He's going to go again inside job. He still has the same old thing on the board as well, so he can go again if he wanted. Uh, he sees the efficiency committee, and that's the game. Uh, takes him all to seven points. There wasn't a great deal I could do about that. A finish up on 12... 
uh, prestige. And I uh, feel like I had a decent game, it just my court game fell apart. Um, left, right and centre. Some bad plays on my part, but nothing horrendous or horrifically bad. It just seemed to be a bit of a combination of bad draw and bad luck. But then I did get good luck as my runner, uh, when I wasn't cheating. And um, I, I was able to see the agendas I needed when I saw them. Um, but anyway, so I finished on 12 Prestige, along with I think 10 other people at the tournament. There were 10 people on 12 Prestige. And unfortunately I was bottom of that pile uh, and finished 14th place because of my weak side wit losses, I should say. Um, there were two or three people on 12 Prestige who made top eight, but just had a more even balance and even spread of uh, wins and losses as their corporate runner. Um, so that was just the, name, the, the, the way it went, unfortunately. In retrospect, having watched round, th round three back, I probably would have felt bad if I had made top eight, so I won't complain about it too much. But a very competitive tournament, incredibly well run by... Uh, the chaps over at Guys That Game at Stoke, and I would encourage you to seek them out on their Facebook page uh, and uh, get in contact with them if you're local. Uh, in the meantime, please feel free to check out us on netrunners.co.uk, have a look at our forums. Uh, we're pl planning to bring you some new content soon, obviously as well with the release of Honour and Profit, which is swiftly upon us. Um, hopefully we'll have some fun decks and some fun articles for you to read, uh, including our Spin Cycle Awards, which should be up. Um, by the time you've watched this video. Uh, so uh, do pop along to the site, that's netrunners.co.uk. In the meantime, pop along to the forums, have a chat with us, let me know how badly I, I played this match, and uh, we hope to see you again for our next run of casts, which will probably be the regionals at Cardiff in May. So we will join you then.